In this video, we're discussing how to use the graphing calculator to find critical z values for a hypothesis testing procedure. If you remember, there are three types of tests we conduct. We conduct the left tail test, the right tail test, or the two tailed test when we're, when we're testing hypothesis. The thing we have to figure out then is how to get the calculator to find the critical z value in those three cases. Let's have a little reminder of how we know when it's a left tail test, right tail test, and two tailed test. So if you recall, we're looking at HA to determine the type of test, right? And HA will tell us that by looking at its symbols. So HA has three symbols. It uses either less than, greater than, or not equal to. The type of test, then, that results for the less than symbol is a left tailed test, right? For the greater than symbol, it's a right tailed test. And for the not equal to, it's a two tailed test. All right, so we have the type of test, we have the HA. And lastly, what we want to do is then figure out what we do in the calculator then, what we have to enter in the calculator. Well, let's start by saying that for each of these problems, the calculator is going to require us to do second and then vars. So we'll have to work in the second vars option, and we're going to take number three, which is the inverse norm. That's the first thing. We need to be aware that that's what we'll be doing in each of the problems. However, we have to figure out what goes in here, and that's what we'll write down here for each of these cases, right? So what do you put in the calculator to get the answer? Well, in the case of the left tail test, what you're going to be thinking about is, okay, all the alpha is going to be devoted into one tail on the left-hand side. So all I have to give the calculator in that case is alpha as a decimal. So we give it alpha for the calculator to give us the correct left tail value. That's all that has to be done. In the case of the right tail test, what we're going to give the calculator is 1 minus alpha. And that will give us the right value in that case. And then finally, in the case of the two-tailed test, the final one, we're just going to do 1 minus alpha divided by 2. All right, so these are the three cases. For a left tail test, just give it alpha. For a right tail test, you give it 1 minus alpha. For a two-tailed test, you give it 1 minus alpha divided by 2. If you want to see why this is true, I'll do some drawings here. In the case of the left tail test, the drawing looks like this, right? You have alpha here. What your calculator wants to know is how much area is from here down. That's what the calculator needs to be able to give us the critical z value. And so the area below this line is alpha. So it'll give us the proper z alpha value in that case if we give it alpha. That's for the left tail test. For the right tail test, the drawing looks like this. And so we know that this part has alpha. So, but the calculator needs to know the area from here down to here. Well, since the total area in the curve is 1, if we do 1 minus this little bit of alpha, we'll have the area from there all the way over. And then finally, the last scenario is the two-tailed scenario. And the two-tailed scenario is actually just like the confidence interval, where we split the alpha into two parts, right? But again, we need to know critical value from here over. And remember that for the two-tailed value, you must add the, add the plus or minus, right, to the answer yourself. Because, of course, we're going to have two values, right? We'll have a z alpha divided by 2 negative on this side and a z alpha divided by 2 on this side, right? Of course, this one is just z alpha, right? This would be minus z alpha as well. It would be negative because, again, it's on the left, right, of 0. That will be on the right of 0, so it's just z alpha. Okay, so basically what the calculator needs, again, though, to get us the right alpha value is to get this value all the way over. So it's 1 minus alpha divided by 2. If you take that away, we'll get that answer there. When you add the plus or minus to it yourself. You could, of course, also give it alpha divided by 2 and then just do, you know, It'll give you the minus one in that case, and you can just add the positive in front of it as well. Either one of those would work. So you could use this, or you can use just alpha divided by two, 
And then, you know, of course, you'll have the negative to start and you'll add the positive one in there as your second answer. Okay, so we're going to demonstrate this for the next set of problems. It's actually pretty simple from now on. So let's do that then. Okay, so looking at the first one, what I want to recognize is that this is HO, which means I have to figure out what HA is. And I'm going to say, hey, HA in that case is not equal to, right? So if HA is not equal to, that means that it's a two-tailed test. So in order to do this problem using the calculator, I'm going to pull up that second vars. I'm going to go down to option three. And then on option three, I'm going to put in the statement that needs to be done for a two-tailed test. And we said that we could either do one minus alpha divided by two or just alpha divided by two. All right, so let's do one minus 0 0.01 divided by two close up the parenthesis, hit enter, and we get our answer. It's 2.576, right? But of course, since it's a two-tailed test, we'll also have negative 2.576. So we have the positive version. If we want the negative version, we just do negative 2.576. We can also force the calculator to give us that version by giving it, again, inverse norm and then telling it the alpha 0.01 divided by two. This would give us the negative version of it. So minus 2.576. So if you wanna get both of them, you can use the calculator twice or you can just add the negative onto it, the positive one that you get first. All right, now let's do the next one. When I look at this one, I see that this guy is HA because it has a less than symbol. And because it has a less than symbol, it's a left tail test. If the left tail test, all we have to do is enter alpha into the calculator. So I'm going to hit second, vars, option three, and I'm going to type in 0 0.05, close my parentheses, and I get the correct answer at minus 1.645, minus 1.645. All right, let's do the same thing for this one. This is a right-tailed test, so I just have to give it uh, one minus alpha for that. So a second distribution, go down to inverse norm, and again, for the right tail test, we do one minus alpha. So one minus the alpha of 0 0.02, close it up, hit enter, and we have a result of 2.054 if we go to three decimal places. All right, and then this is a not equal to, so it's a two tailed test. So again, we're gonna do second vars. We're gonna go down to option three, right? And for a two-tailed test, remember, to get the first one, to get the negative one, we could just do 0 0.02 in the calculator, divided by 2, sorry, 0 0.02 divided by 2 because of the two-tailed test, don't forget that. And that'll give us the negative side, minus 2.326. And if I want to do the same thing and get the positive answer, I can do second bars, and I can go down to option 3, and I can do 1 minus... 0 0.02 divided by 2. This will give us the positive version of 2.326. Of course, you could have just started with the first one and then know that the positive one is just you know dropping the negative there and of course having the same number positive. Either way works for that one. And then finally, this one here, be careful, this is HO because it has an equal to sign. So the opposite of that is less than. So the HA in this problem is less than. So this is a left tailed test. And so we're gonna be doing just the 0 0.01 to get our answer. So second bars, option three, and we do 0 0.01, close up the parentheses, and we get the value negative 2.326 finally. Okay, so those are our five results, and that's how to use the graphing calculator to find critical z values.